Mr. Library Mario, whoever that was that the email I received from the yep. as part that and then they agreed that's with all my conditions. The library or the social service and board, you're not a portfolio is all of that, no, right? that's that's just regular. Okay, None so you'll, you'll continue that one. Yep. Okay, so the old and one that we'll have to replace so is the library board. board then. Tried, yep, and planning uh, and zoning. And planning and zoning. Work out yep. the okay. the I'm going to make a note on my library sheet. Well, I, I talked to uh, Dave Sebastian, I talked to Asgard, I talked to Lisa back home, I talked to Dave Lundstrom, and they all we're willing yes, to go along with them for them for conditions. And then it was undone. Step grandchildren. From his brother. Not from him. You know, they said they were his grandchildren. Well, this this step grandchildren. I shouldn't say step, they were uh yeah, exactly that, wouldn't they? His brother's kids would be his Boy, he was fast, wasn't he? <laughs> they never said nothing about it. Hey, he's got little ones running around. Yeah, he's 69. Somebody's keeping up on that. All disturbed land protection count is 40. Is that referring to the road and everything? You got any extra copies for the bills for today? I don't, we didn't get a spreadsheet done. You got the stack of bills, we have to review them. I was feeling pretty full because I did really good. I said I came home and I had a, a fuel bill and a, a feed bill. And I pretty much just had these checked away. <laughs> he said that just went that fast. It went that fast, didn't it? He said I was feeling so good. Yeah. You're right. Just remember, 10.30 is a public hearing. Ooh. We're going to quit that. We're not going to have public no, hearings done. anymore? No, there's no sense in that, is there? <laughs> no. Motion. No, there's a public meeting. Yep. We're going to go to all executive session. Oh. For the next meeting. Okay. And after that, we'll see. to adjourn regular meeting and move to a public hearing. Right? Yep. Hello everybody. It's nine o'clock. It's time to start our meeting. Good morning. Okay, uh, the first thing on our deal is to approve the agenda and then see if anybody has, well, I'm sorry. Shanna, please do a roll call. Dwight? Aye. Wayne? Here. Dwayne? Here. Marvin? Here. Merlin? Here. Thank you. Approve the agenda. Does anybody have any corrections or changes to the agenda? <clears throat> uh, I see COVID isn't on there. I would like that added. 
and I have a email f from uh, the superintendent of uh, Asgard. I would like Asgard resources on the agenda. Do you want that under road issues or just under other business? Just under other business. Does anybody else have anything they'd like to add or change? There be no other additions or changes. I have a motion to accept the agenda as amended. So I'll moved. Move. That's a race. Oh. So I'm going to give that to Merlin. He was, my ear was closer. Do I have a second, please? Second, Mr. Chairman. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Merlin, how do you vote? Aye. Wayne? Aye. Dwayne? Aye. Dwight? Aye. I vote aye. Motion passed. Next on the agenda is to approve the minutes of October 21st. These were sent to us via email and in a packet. Does anyone have any corrections or see something that was missed? There being no further corrections or to the minutes, I have a motion to accept as printed. Also move. Do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Dwayne? Aye. Merlin? Aye. Dwight? Aye. Wayne? How about I? Motion passed. Hi. Thank you. It did pass though, regardless. All right. Uh, next thing is to approve bills. And uh, we're going to do it manually this time. Mr. Chairman, just kind of a heads up. We uh, did overexpend our budget at the uh, buildings and grounds area. Uh, the Bobcat cost about $3,000 extra for fixing. So when you see that bill coming along, that's what that's for. What year is your Bobcat? I don't know. I don't know. A couple years, huh? Because uh, Dwayne has one he hardly uses. That's true. He's got to 250 hours on it. Good grief. I put more of that on in three days than mine. So we're ready to go, but if there's no snow, then I'll just leave it. Yeah, we're not going to have any of that this winter. Yeah. Good. Snowless winter. Dream on. You said there's not money in, in his budget for this Bobcat bill? There is, but we overexpended the line item. I believe he said you put that into the repairs and maintenance one. Well, then he should have probably come in and discussed it with us. I believe that's what I'm doing right now. It's too late now. It's already been created. Um, there's one here from Shanna Brost. I think if you go in the century code under the auditor, you'll read that the auditor is not entitled to any extra reimbursement than her wages from the, the and for any uh, county functions. So I want to pull that bill. My mileage reimbursement for running around for election? Yep. It says in the century code you're not entitled to any extra compensation. I would like legal opinion on that when she comes in. We'll just read it in the century code, plain well, and simple. I'm asking for legal opinion on it when she comes in. I know it's went through in the past, but. Is 
Is this transfer switch all taken care of now? Do you know? Should be. The last bill, do you think? I'm just curious. I was looking at my stuff today. I thought, yeah, I don't recall seeing that final completion of that installation. To... I believe it is. Okay, to pay bills on a contract, it has to be reviewed by a board member, if I'm not mistaken. Why don't you pull that bill there, please? This one? Yes, just hold it to the side. We'll talk about it. says it has to be <coughs> you can't pay a certain amount of it until you've been approved and so on. But if you're comfortable that everything is done, we'll talk about it. Jim might want to come in and explain that. Yeah, I think Shanna's sending him a text right now to come in, so that'll be good. Okay, who got the flowers? On this transfer switch, I used to work on those, okay? Generally, they're tested. We don't really want it. Well, we should test it. It has to be able to go up and turn everything off. They did, I think. That's what I want to know. That's part of the I think they deal. did. That, but you'll have to check with Jim. Like I said, I think he's probably taking it. This special assessment of 10-7, is that going to be your annual assessment? Nope, that's, uh, it's not, it's 75000 There's three bills there. Okay, so the total is, I see that now. I, was, I thought this was just documentation, but. So annually it's going to be. Nope, that's paying it off. So there's no penalty and interest on it. Is that for the street work? Yeah. Was that a good move? Well, that's what we had talked about during budget time, taking it out of the CD interest fund. That's why I coded it. I think it's a good move. Um, I mean, that, that's a lot of interest at 3.6% over 20 years. Jim, we have a bill here, and I asked the question, did we test that transfer switch? Yeah. Here. Snyder got us here. So we shut things down, transferred, brought it back up, it held, everything was good? Yeah. So you're satisfied with the installation as being complete? Yeah. I, I got the Bobcat bill here. That's what I needed to know, Jim. We tested it, and that you're satisfied. Yeah. Dwight, you had a question on Bobcat? Yeah, where are you going to get the money from to pay for that? You have money in your budget, just not that line item. Yeah. Do you amend that line item then? I got a 
No, not, we only amend the budget if it goes over the total amount. It's a pretty good list of stuff all to go out at one time. <clears throat> I can't believe you didn't have time to come in here and talk to us about it. Well, that ban was leaking hydraulic oil. For how long? Well, we just have everybody else when they got unexpected bills like that coming in. Most people do come in and talk to the commissioners about it. And he visited with me about it. Are you, you're plural, commissioners? No, commissioner. Oh, well, you can't make that decision on your own. So I'm going to go back to that. Uh, Special assessment. Yeah. That all come yeah. out of the, the. Oh, I don't need the bill. I'm just asking Chad. I looked at, but I don't recall. Did we have enough money in our CD and passbook savings? It was close, right? Yeah, there's a hundred. There's 120 in there, I think. 120,000 was in there. In the CD interest of fund. Okay, I thought it was closer to 80, but okay, thanks. I can go double check. Uh, it's not that important. Check month end. It's not that critical. I have the trial balance in front of me here. I can look that up too if I want to. Yeah, it's this one's on the water. Twenty-nine seventy-five. Let's do up. I recall the conversation, Sharon. You can take take it out wherever, I guess. No, that, that's fine. And I remember you saying that you. I wanted to use that money for uh, audit. You should know I want to use that for the paying back. In my mind, in fact, I even visited with Merlin about it individually, that special assessments are over a period of time. You don't have to pay them all at once. It's paid. I'm not, there's no question about that. In the back of my mind, I'm thinking that, you know, because of our budget concerns, that to be cognizant of that. They're charging a lot of interest on that. That's, that's 3.6? That's enough. You know, that, that adds up. It's done. It's, it's, and we had the money for it, and it's fine. I have no objection. Just the back of my mind. I'll do that. Gene, right now we're approving bills, okay? This is the old system that we used to use. Manually, we look at every invoice, see if there's a question. To expedite this, we have moved to where she prepares a voucher list. And if there's anything, then we can pull the invoice and look at it. And it's much more expedient. Today, because of the election, we're choosing to do it this way because of the impact to the auditor's office. So you know. There's one here from uh, Pomp's Tire Service for four squad tires. I thought we were on, I was under the impression that Northwest Tire got the bid for the tires and we were going to buy them all from Northwest Tire. Is that the Sheriff Department? Yeah. I had that discussion last year and I was advised that. Yeah, I know the high speed stuff. The that's spec, all, they said that they had to do that's that. That's all baloney. They're all high speed nowadays. <clears throat> this is for 
for the sewer, I'm guessing, but the um, up at the road department. I think you, you got a sticky note on this. Do you want that? Send it back to you. It says, I need this one back to mail. I know, but that's with our department, that is. That's a note for uh, Going on there. This is the one that falls apart, I think. <laughs> so that one's got one top or something. It's supposed to get that first, and then you st stick it pieces in all the other ones. Okay. Uh, we I, I can just shuffle the whole work. I don't just clap it right in the of that. Okay, the only one that's still here is, uh, how do you want to handle this this deal with uh, the mileage light? I don't think we should pay it because it's not. Uh, What's the century code that you're referring to? I'll have to look it up. We paid every official's mileage. Well, <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't write the century code. Okay. Well, Jessica, Do you not receive mileage for coming to meetings? How many mileage checks have you received in the last four years? Um, one a month for four years, about 48 of them. Okay. But I'm not on, I don't have get a salary. You're an elected official the That's same right. as I am, and you do get it a salary. It says in the century code that you're entitled to no more compensation than your salary. Okay. 
What I'm going to suggest is that we hold this bill, stop the debate, and hold the bill. And uh, well, then I would like to rebut saying that if there's any other mileage checks in there for county commissioners, they need to be pulled too. Okay. Because that's I don't understand where this is coming from. Well, thank you. I'm sure Jessica will be in here shortly. Right. We can get her opinion. Right. So I'm what I'm going to ask for is a, a payment of regular bills uh, minus the one for Shanna Brost. And then when Jessica answers it, we can approve that bill. That way we'll have a legal opinion and stop all the debate. I'm good with that. Okay. We reviewed all the bills. Can I have a motion to accept or discussion on the treasurer's bills? $23.26, I believe. I'll make a move to pay the treasurer bill. Do I have a second? Second that, Mr. Chairman. Any discussion? This one, the one that stacks through, we're okay with it? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. You did a good job answering that, I thought. Unless, does anybody have any other questions? Well, we're, we have a motion. We're going to take care of this first. Right. Uh, any further discussion on the treasurer's bills? Dwayne, how do you vote? Aye. Wayne? Aye. Merlin? Aye. I vote aye. Motion passed. Do I have a motion to pay the regular bills? Dwight, do you want to make your motion? Hey, yeah, I'll make the motion to pay the regular bills, excluding the mileage uh, bill from the auditor. Do we have a second? Second that. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Dwight, how do you vote? Aye. Dwayne? Aye. Wayne? Aye. Merlin? Aye. And I vote aye. Motion passed. Here this bill is. We'll just hold this until. So bills have been approved. It is long time till 10 o'clock. For your information, you know how this works. We follow the agenda for all the regular business on top. We have to follow the clock in case other people want to come in and see that topic. So now we're going to move down to other business, which doesn't have a set time. That's how we're doing it. There's a copy of the agenda right in front of you on this end of the deal there. Then you can pencil things on there as we're going. Don't take all of them. <laughs> okay. Uh, there we go. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. NESU extension highlights. Is there any concerns or discussion on that? For review. Landfill tractor bid. Shanna emailed me that the three bids were retracted. Yes, no? Yep. Okay. The question she asked, does this have to go back out for bids? Per the century code that I know, the answer is yes. It has to be sold by a public auction. But I have some questions on this. Did they give us written notice that they didn't want to? No. Under the bills? No. I personally talked to several of them. Well, two out of the three, and Candy talked to all three of them, I believe. So. May I say something here, Mr. Chairman? Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. Uh, the big thing on this was that she had advertisers on business and she got the three bids. And then the decision here at the uh, commission meeting was that she had to put it in the local paper. That, that is by law, but go ahead, yes. She never got any bids out of the paper. Is that true? Yes. Oh, wow. And time went by so things developed with the first three bidders, uh, illness and different things. So they all pulled out their bids. And, uh, you know, we just wasted a lot of time here. How, how did we it, waste the time? Well, it, we didn't get any more bids from the local paper and, and okay. we had three bids from the... Okay. It, it took a lot more time. Uh, Okay. Took a lot of time. It is the law. We have to. This is not our property. That's the century code. We had to follow it. 
That's just the way Who it is. Who sold a truck here one time that John Disneyland? I think you put it in. The I paper. put an ad in the paper, but it was also publicly advertised. But we, you know, the deal was we had bids, and we didn't get any more. And I don't know, weeks went by on that bidding process. And uh, okay, the question is now. Thank you. The question is now, do we have to put this back in the paper? In my opinion, by law, we do. There's five of us here. You guys can vote on it. I'll make a motion that we put the tractor bid back back in uh, county paper. I need a motion that contains the bid opening date and time. It has to be advertised two weeks. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. We are at... Uh, December, what's the first meeting in December? The second. Does that cover our two weeks? Could be in here. Nope, it does not. It'll be published here and here. Yeah, it was. Okay, December 2nd. I move we put tractor bids out for public advertisement with opening December 2nd. At 1030? 1030. Second. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? I vote aye. Merlin? Aye. Dwayne? Aye. Wayne? I vote aye. Dwight? Aye. Motion passed. Annual financial statement. Uh, Dwight or someone, would you please let uh, Darby know that she can come in anytime she wants to? Bear with me. Here it is. And I did find that in the Century Code. It's 11.13.02, number 6. Perform and transact all county business without extra compensation. Okay, we wrote it down. When Jessica comes, we'll... I, I can't read it. I'm not going to open that up, so... You said 11.13.02, is that what you said? 11.13.01, didn't I say? Let me look, make sure. I wrote it down as fast as I could. Well, here's Jessica now. And here's Darby now. This is marvelous. We're getting everything okay. all one crack. I'm sure here. that's just your opinion. <laughs> okay. Um, being as you're here, does the board mind if we do the treasurer's report first? Mm -hmm. So we don't waste her time. Okay, treasurer's report, please. Go ahead. I was using my head. That's what it looked like. <laughs> or, as a battering ram. I walked under a board that was a little bit too long. I want to thank you not to use that long sheet of paper again. That's pretty that nice. Just for, you this morning. I for the rest of In us. In my too. world, it's the big paper. Okay. Can I use this? Yes. This I didn't bring enough. I guess. So we kind of got shorted on our report. Uh, it's all there. All right. It's just smaller, harder to read. I guess I have one, so. According, yeah, I can't get We have overspent our income, our expenses have one thousand by one thousand two thirteen eight sixty five thirty four, and we are twenty eight thousand five forty eight sixty six less than last month. And this is your income versus your expenses. This is what's on your sheet. The county right now total money as of October thirtieth five hundred 
5.9087147.73. That's all the cash we have. Do you recall what it was at the beginning of the year? Mm, well, at the beginning of the year, it's pro it, it's I can get that for you right quick. No, I'm just you know. no, I don't. I have the sheets at home, but it doesn't matter. That's ten months ago, Marge. <laughs> okay, on this uh, treasurer's report now, <clears throat> does anybody have any questions for Darby? And that is with all our CARES money too, that's all your COVID money you've received. That's included in this. That's real close to seven hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Yep, it's on there. But that the the total on this balance sheet includes that. Just so you know, the five five million nine hundred eight thousand is what you have in the bank as of now. As of the 30th of October, I should say. Okay. A couple things. Yep. Uh, not for you, it's for the board, but you can certainly listen. Um, I did make copies. I did run a copy of the, uh, for myself. It shows the possibility that some of our state aid may be decreasing and I think I've shown you in the past that since 17 it's gone down 13 percent um, I wish I would have ran some copies of this I'll just get, get you guys if you guys are interested this shows you all the state revenues for every single month what it, what it comes down to and how much we're getting and uh, I'll get you guys copies whoever wants those because what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask all the board members including myself <coughs> and the auditor for our next meeting to come up with ways that we can cover this shortfall I'm not sure how we're going to make up 1.2 million dollars by the end of the year We requested uh, some budget cuts. We haven't received those. So we have to come up with $1.2 million by the end of the year. If anybody has any ideas, I challenge them to bring those to the next meeting. I will bring something, hopefully, that is logical. Okay. Um, okay. Like the cows are out. The uh, I ask that we accept the treasurer's report and that her values be printed in the minutes. Any objection by the board? Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you, Darby. Okay, now I'm back to the annual financial statement, see if I can find it again. Okay. We are, our county, our board, is supposed to get an annual financial statement. And uh, I'm not sure that we've done it in the past, so I'm just, and I did bring this up at another meeting, and I'm just bringing it up again because there wasn't any resolution. And what I brought with me, what, was proposed at the other meeting was that this fund balance report is our financial report. Okay? I disagree. And there is a sentry code on this too that says we're supposed to get this. I brought two examples. And I did not make copies of them of what a financial statement is. And I brought one from Dunn County and one from Cass County. 
And that's what I want for a financial statement in per century code. If I'm er erroneous on this, I'd, someone can certainly correct me. And I didn't write down the century code. 11, 11, 11, comma 2, something like that. She has till the 15th. Exactly. And she can give you that report. Mm -hmm. You can't necessarily dictate the form of which that report is in. I, I never, I'm not doing that. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, you asked, I'm just clarifying. Okay. Thank you. So, I would like to get a financial report and she will present it. And I just got a couple examples here. It shows your assets and your liabilities and, and so on and so forth. Um, in fairness, because this is the first time, what was that deadline, November 15th? Mm -hmm. This isn't She's the first time. I've done, done this every year. year. Have you? That's what you have in front of you. Per yes. century code. Yep. You're saying this is our financial report? That's what I give to my auditors. Yep. And it's been that format for, I couldn't even tell how long, before I got here. Well, before you got here, doesn't mean it's always been done correctly. Right, I get that, but <coughs> I haven't had any issues with my auditors with it. So. Well, as a commission, and it's supposed to be published in the paper. Oh, I noticed that it's available. Available? It's published in the paper, yeah, not the actual statement. As a board member, I will not accept this as a financial statement. But there's four other board members here. So, I just wanted to bring it to your guys' attention that uh, here's Rough Riders Electrics, assets, liabilities. This fund balance report is a fund balance report. It tells you how much money is in each one of those funds. It is not a county financial report. So, I want it on record that I suggest financial report include assets and liabilities and, and not to accept the statement of fund activity as our financial report. I would like that in the minutes that Marv is requesting that. It is not a board, but that's my recommendation. Does anybody have any further discussion on that? be no further discussion on that we're done with the annual financial statement give me one second please I have to make a note before noon, huh? CARES funding. As I, Shannon can help me with this too, I believe we're gonna be getting some more CARES funding. Yes, I have submitted uh, October 29th. I submitted uh, the licensed law enforcement personnel payroll costs for August, September, and October. And that total is $398,765.94. Do we expect full reversement? Yes. Okay. And you'll also be turning in um, November and December's payroll. November will get paid in December, and December's payroll get paid in January. And that has been both approved by uh, the OMB and the budget sector as well. So that, that'll be in addition to the 298? Yes. Okay. And it, it roughly runs um, about $130,000 a month. So. I would anticipate on top of this 398,000, we'll get about another $250,000. Okay. And that was, yeah, I submitted that in October, the 29th.
again, I'm going to suggest, because there's two things on our CARES funding. Right now it's in 2129 Public Safety Grant Fund. Who can invoice against that, Shannon? Uh, well, anybody can invoice against it. It's not going to get paid out of there. Nothing's going to get paid out of there unless it's siren costs, because that money was specifically set aside for siren. Okay, the first deposit was stated thusly that that's exactly what it was for. What's the board's recommendation for the rest of the CARES fund? I want it on record. Here's what I suggest. I'm going to go back to him. I believe we should set up a separate. This is a large amount of money. We're talking over a million dollars here. It's given to us by the state, and we're going to have to be held accountable for how we spent that money. And we should list it accordingly, how we're spending that money. Radios, base station, whatever the case might be. It might be other things. Presently, all that's underneath that 2129 is office supplies. We are not buying office supplies. That's a misrepresentation of expense records. Two things. First one, I move that CARES funding be set as a separate restricted fund, expenses not to be withdrawn without board approval. That's a motion? Yes, it is. I'll second that motion. Is there any further discussion? Mr. Chairman, are you talking about this uh, money we're talking about here today, the 378, 398, and the extra one three that we'll probably have by the end of the year? I'm talking about all three, yes. Right now we have about 698,000. 78. 678,000 per the bank statement that we have right here. There, that's what we got the first time. We're going to be getting almost 400,000 more in October, another 130 next month. I mean, by the end, possibly in no for November and December when it comes to this month. So that's a million dollars that we're getting, and I want to track that revenue. I think the taxpayers should know what we're using that ta that money for and how we be held accountable for it. Some of us aren't going to be here three, five years from now, and then the question is going to come up, how did you spend that money? What did you guys do with it? We should have a very clear and transparent, open record, exactly what we did. And it's not hard to do. It's very simple. So I have a motion, and I have a second. Is there any further discussion? Yes, I have some discussion. Go ahead. Um, Shawnee, you said that for these uh, 398 and the 130, you were, that was for law enforcement salary and things, things like that? Yeah. Well, if memory serves me right, Mr. Chairman, when the uh, Legislative Council passed this along here, that was their intent, that it be used for that particular area. That is incorrect. They used that as a reference for how much to give us in CARES money. The letter that came from CARES was that this money be used so that we don't have to raise our taxes. We're not talking the current year, we're talking, that's what it said. It said that money is for the county, help them for expenses so they don't have to raise taxes. It is not specifically just for the Sheriff's Department. So, so this well, but, oh. Sorry. Well, getting getting back to a little more to what Merlin mentioned, uh, I mean, it, it was talked about this was supposed to be for salaries for the sheriff division. That's how it was stated. And and then it says, he was just on the other day, if you aren't using it for, for that, you use it as needed through the county so that you don't raise the taxes, but you're you got other expenses that you're meeting it on, so. Okay. And but, I think that's marvelous that we have this because that'll go a long way in that million dollars you're talking about to come up with for uh, budgeting. So this is great. 
then if we really want, we'll just not buy any motor graders and that'll give us another 380,000. So. How's that working for the sheriff? <laughs> My question to both of you, how is putting this into a restricted fund preventing from all that from occurring? Everything would occur just like you guys want, but we would have historical data that we can go back and follow and track exactly how it was spent, whether it's for sheriff, or what radios, what we would, it would be a restricted fund so that no one, like she said, who can invoice against it, would have to come to the board before they could get payment from it. They well, would approach the board and say, you well, have a million dollars. But Marvin, though, just ask, uh, regardless what you use that fund for, you still have to track what that fund was used. Exactly, that's the second part. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, how are you going to track it if it's in the bank? Plain and simple, it's in the bank. Well, any time an expenditure is uh, written out of that fund, it has to be tracked. That, you know, you know. Okay, Wayne, how would it be tracked? Presently, how would it be tracked? That's what I'm asking. Let's just say we buy radios for the patrol cars. Mm -hmm. How would that be tracked? going to be coded to 2129 and when you print out a list of everything that's been coded to 2129 it's also going to be tracked or coded to office supplies it's not going radios to say radios on there it's going to say the invoice will the well, when you pull up when you system. pull when you pull up that fund okay look at your other funds you guys you have tires on there you have all these items that tell you exactly what the road department is spending their money on why wouldn't we do the same thing for the cares fund why would you list it underneath office supplies? If I search office supplies right now, let's just say we spend this money on radios. If I search office supplies, it's gonna show that value. And it won't list anything else. It'll say office supplies, I think it's code 244 for office supplies. You pull that up, it'll pull up all the, all the costs. So you spent a million dollars on office supplies that you didn't, you actually spent it on radios because you didn't add these line items to it. It's just like we do any other fund. It would be able to track our expenses. So, anyhow, we have a motion and a second to put this into a restricted fund. Shanna, will you read the motion, please? The CARES funding be set up as a separate restricted fund and expenditures not withdrawn without board approval. Okay. Is there any further discussion? Yes, and again, so the uh, total $528,000 that uh, will be your intent to go toward that million dollars we were talking about earlier, that you were gonna come up with ideas on how to uh, pay for it. We could do that. I'm not, I'm not sure the, the number that you just gave us, you said 530. 528,000, that's what the 398 and the 130. Plus the 620, plus the 679, that's already there. No, I'm talking about just this, that we the new, because the other is for the siren fund. Right. Why would we be putting money towards the siren money when we already know that we have excess funds in that account? This money is supposed to be used. Shanna, that is not the siren account. We Why don't have excess. Let her talk. You're talking about okay, the software the, system. <clears throat> let her finish. You keep interrupting her. She interrupted us too. Go ahead, Shanna, please. I don't know why would we be putting this this money that's coming in the future into 2129. We have designated that account for siren expenditures. We know it's not going to cost us a million dollars. We know it's going to cost us a half a million dollars. Why wouldn't we deposit this into the general fund? That is what the dollars are intended for. We also have a big project that Jim Albers told us about, about the heating and air system that's $300,000. Okay. So anytime you need to expend anything above the siren project, we're supposed to come ask the board for permission. We already have a budget. What I want to do is I want to track this fund. Depositing it into the general fund and then, then it gets expensed and all the other funds and there's no way of tracking where that, how much of that, how much went to the building fund from the CARES fund. You can't tell that. If you put on a dollar amount in, into the building fund, you can because then it goes to the building fund. Once you put the money into the general fund, let's just say you put this 500,000, yes. the number that you're saying, you put that in there. It's going to be allocated, or it's going to be spent. It's going Just to be like spent, and we're not else. going to know exactly That's where. That's right. When I look this up five years from now, the CARES money, 
I will not, it'll say what well, it was in the general fund for whatever year and is spent. It's not made to balance the present budget today. Putting it in the budget for 2020. It's not made to balance any budget. It's meant to reimburse payroll, which comes out of general fund, correct? It's, yes. it's made for the commissioners to d help defray the cost of raising the taxes. I understand that, but it's also as reimbursement out of, from payroll, correct, which comes out of general fund? Yes. I'm asking, correct? I'm not sure of your question. It's meant to reimburse payroll for law enforcement. Payroll comes out of the general fund. So okay. it would stand yes. to reason we're reimbursing payroll that goes back into the general fund. That would be part of it. It is meant to re reimburse payroll. It is meant to also aid wherever it's needed in the county, not just payroll, to reduce taxes to the taxpayers, not just payroll. I understand. You're not. And I want to be able to track it. I don't know why. Why is there a restriction to tracking our money? I don't understand. It's tracked no matter what you spend. Everything's tracked. We have an expenditure number. We can't pay one bill you, you have a road? without an expenditure number. Not one bill can get, not one check okay. can get written without it being tracked to a fund number. Okay. Not one. We, how many funds do we have? Total? Yeah. I don't know. I'd have to count them. A lot. Okay. We have a lot of funds. But they're all tracked and they're all... Hey, all for something. If we have a lot of funds, they are set up specifically to track a specific thing. That's why you set them up. Yeah, but you're talking revenue on one side and we're and, and expenditure. You're mixing those together again. You can't do that. They have I'm not mixing those together. I want to track the CARES fund. We don't have a CARES fund. I want to set one up, and that's what my motion is. My motion is to set up a restricted fund for the CARES money. The first chunk of money went into the public safety grant that this board specifically stated was for siren purposes. I so now you want to set up another fund? I want to set up. The answer is yes, I do. And then who who gets the who gets to spend out of it? What are you going to spend out of that three hundred ninety-eight thousand? It's supposed to go to help the general bill to help the county in general. So I don't understand. The, the, the same thing is that I just got done saying. We have a, a lot of other funds. So we can track where our money is going. We're, I'm just asking for one more fund so we can track the CARES money that we got, and down the road we'll know exactly what happened to it. There is nothing wrong with tracking our funds. I, but my question, Marvin, is what, what are your plans? For, what are you going to expend out of that CARES fund? What? We don't know yet. Everything. Because everything else that we expend in this county has an expenditure number to it. Our, prop, our um, insurance, our payroll, our health insurance, um, our retirement, the postage, the election. Everything has a specific expenditure number. Okay. So now what are you going to... So it, now you get to decide as the chairman where this 398 and how it's being spent instead of it just going into the county general fund where it was intended to go? It goes well, into... I have, I have a marvelous ahead. idea. Mm -hmm. You know, we have the 398 that should be coming in 130, like I said. You could just pull my application and, and move uh, it. You asked that, you know, if any of us have any ideas of how we can help take care of this million dollar deficit thing we have, well, here's my idea right there. Okay, that's one way of doing it. Two questions here. First, Shanna asked something. How, ask what are my expenditures going to be? Let's just say in 2022, when we get to budget season next year, I'm just as an example, we don't, that's how it would work. Putting it into the CARES, into the general fund for 2020, we already have a budget that we need to follow and we need to be held accountable for overspending it. All of a sudden we just dump in another $500,000 and they say, well, we did pretty good that year. Actually, we never. You shouldn't have to transfer into the general fund. That is a red flag of bad budgeting. And that comes from the state auditor. If you set up this fund, all you have to do is transfer out to wherever it's needed. It's really simple. So we have a motion and a second. Do we have any more discussion? Yes, over here. I keep on hearing we're reimbursing wages. Isn't the 2019 budget covered all the wages? 
Why do we have to reimburse wages? You're right, it is. But this specifically, this form, that this grant that I filled out, this reimbursement form, is specific to the number of licensed law enforcement personnel and their wages. And that is how the dollar and cents, that's how you're getting this And funding. And what is that for? I mean, why are they doing that? Because the law enforcement has been essential personnel through the whole COVID pandemic. And they've been getting paid. They've they been, have getting been getting paid, paid but they according don't, to the budget but from, they that don't was set get up any, last They didn't get time off. They didn't get a big Fridays off like uh, the courthouse personnel did. They're Neither did the road department. They have to be here. Well, and the road department's essential too. They have to work when, when they need to work. The state. But the state decided this. I didn't decide this, Dwight. Well, it's not the just for law Dakota. enforcement. Well, like you guys that's the form make that I filled out, and that's yeah. specifically Whatever. what that's, it states. But that's not, no, that's not how it's being, that's not what we're saying, Dwight. That yeah. it, what we're saying, though, is that it's meant to be reimbursement for payroll, which comes out of the general, so it should go mm, back. The expense, the expense of it, we're not saying is isolated to law enforcement. Well, why would you want to reimburse your budget for last year that's already been set? not for last year, it's for right now. You want to use it for, for 19's budget? No. To reimburse the wages that you're paying? This is 2020 wages. That's right, and that's where you want to spend it, in 2020. And them wages have already been set by your budget nobody, that you made in 19. Nobody, Why do you have to reimburse? That's what the dollars are meant for, is the payroll reimbursement. Nobody's saying that this, these dollars have to be spent right now. No. This Let's that, vote on it, get it over with. Okay. The intent is for this fund, so wherever it's needed, we can, as a commissioner, can vote on it, and we can track historically yeah, where it all went. Right. You know, this is a simple accounting yeah. thing of just listing mm -hmm. it, and there shouldn't yeah. be any objection to this. You look, you look at last month on the treasurer's report. That was down to six twenty-seven, so about fifty thousand dollars out of that fund was used for wages, to make wages for that month. So it's already been spent. Now it's back in there because more money was put into the general fund. Did we see that expense? No. It is not meant or intended to cover budget shortfalls that we are budgeting. That's exactly for. right. And transferring into the general fund is, by all accounting, a red flag. We need to change our practices. <clears throat> Mr. We can, all we got to do is track. Mr. That's all Chairman, I'm asking. I do believe that's what it was meant for was budget shortfall so that you could cover that so you weren't raising taxes. That's exactly what it was meant for. That means it would be for the future because we're not raising taxes. We already did our budget right. for this year. But I'm saying that is exactly what and it was. And then means. next year, next year when it comes time to do budget, if we need some more money, we could transfer out of this fund into the general fund to cover the shortfall. But you just said we shouldn't be transferring into the general fund. We should not be having to transfer into the general fund, and not we shouldn't have those year. shortfalls. Yeah. This but year that's what the intent was. What you just got done saying, Shanna, was to recover to so we don't have to raise taxes. And again, for uh, what I was saying there, the 528765 if that's part of our intent of uh, covering some of this that you were talking about earlier, Marvin, for the million dollars, then I'll be happy to go on that too. But. Well, we'll probably have, I mean, somebody will probably have to after the amended budget comes in next year. Some of that money will probably have to be used for the shortfalls that were created in this year because people didn't stay within their budgets. So at our next meeting when you're talking about this, then uh, we have 528000 that we covered already. Okay. Shanna, will you, is there any further discussion? No. Merlin, I mean, Shanna, will you please read the motion? That the CARES funding be set as a separate restricted fund and expenditures not withdrawn without board approval. Okay, we have a motion and a second. I vote aye. Dwight? Aye. Wayne? I'll vote nay. Dwayne? No. Merlin? Aye. Motion passed. Second, well, we're at 10 o'clock, right on the nose. Um, Road issues. Uh, the road department is not here. Uh, Ken's on vacation today. And I talked to him this morning. Or actually, I emailed him. I did not talk to him. And on the agenda is the road grader payment. If it's all right with the board, I would like to move that we table that to the next meeting when Ken's here 
And that's what he suggested that we possibly could do. Second. So I so move that we table. Oh, I need a motion to that effect first. You did. Okay. I said I would like to. Okay. I move that we table until the next meeting so Ken can be here. On road or greater, I, I move that road greater payment be moved to until the next meeting. I'll second. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Okay, I vote aye. Merlin? Aye. Dwayne? Aye. Wayne? Vote well, aye. Dwight? Aye. Okay. Now we're still on that subject, and you guys can help me with this. We're receiving the graders. This is a point that I missed last meeting. We're receiving the graders in January, right? That's what the bid said. January of 28. I don't I have it in front of me here, but you can't pay them until they're received, right? You don't pay in advance, I don't think. But anyway, I don't think you would. I just thought he does. Huh? Normally he does. He pays partial, partial pay. year in one budget year, and then he'll pay the next in the next budget year, depending on where his budget numbers are. But month end wasn't complete yesterday, so I didn't get to talk to him about where his numbers are at for the end of October. Oh, so that's been the practice in the past that we've done that? Normally he does. Like, he'll put a down payment on if he's got monies left during yeah. one budget season and then pay it the remainder of the next budget season. Well, that's new, new information. Thank you. Um, so that's going to be tabled to next meeting, but yeah. that's information that we can have to Yeah, and we'll i got to go through his numbers for him before the next meeting. Whatever he would have in his equipment uh, purchase. Around twenty thousand. That's it. My phone's buzzing all over the place here. It's gonna vibrate off the desk. Okay. Um Got to wait till 10.30. Next thing on the other business is siren expenses. We talked about the CARES funding. What I'm going to ask you guys is that our siren expenses be listed. I'm trying to think of the word. That they be listed independently. They do not go underneath office supplies. It would be like buying the road graders and listing underneath office supplies. I would like our siren expenses to be listed as radios so we know how much the radios cost. The, there's portable radios, there's stationary radios, there's a base, I call it the base station. There's different parts of this siren expenses and they're over two to three years. So I would like that sirens, I, I move that siren expenses be itemized by, by the items. I move that siren expenses be itemized by products purchased. Second. We have a motion and we have a second. Is there any further discussion? That's probably a very good idea because there might be reimbursement for some of this stuff down the road. Okay. Well, yeah, and along with that idea too, you know, I would just bet you that uh, the state's going to want to have some kind of report from us on this money we're getting because the feds are probably going to want one from them. So, you know, I'm okay. sure Shannon's going to have it listed out good so that we can have a nice report without okay. trouble. Great. Is there any further discussion? I vote aye. Merlin? Aye. Dwayne? Aye. Wayne? I vote aye. Dwight? Aye. Thank you. Health care transfer. The health care transfer has to do with the 705000 that we transferred into the general fund. Per 11-2307, we have to prepare a statement stating why we did so and tracking that.
So, that's 112307. That's what this, I read that enough times to you guys before, so. How do you guys want to do that? You want me to write up a statement? Or do you want the, there's three guys that approved that, a couple of us never. No, the whole Board of County Commissioners approved it. I voted no. But by majority vote, it was approved by the Board of County Commissioners. Okay. How do you guys want to do that? That needs to be, that needs to, thank you. That needs to occur. So we can track that. You want me to write something up, present it for your editing next, next week? Or do you guys want to write it up? Dwayne, what do you want to do? Well, maybe the auditor that should write that up now. Or... I'm pretty sure it's already in the minutes. I believe so. The yes. transfer is approved in the minutes. That's not what 112307. Jessica, would you please? But like said, okay. I know what you're reading, but that doesn't mean it's right. And it what says... do you mean it don't mean it's right? Century code. It's, it's not right? Okay. Would you let me finish? Yes, I will. I'm surprised okay. by that. Because it says on its records, a statement of all such transfers, the reasons, report, whatever. That can be reflected in the minutes. It doesn't need to be a separate written statement by you. It can be reflected in the minutes, which Shanna is now looking for. Okay, will you read that for us, please, so I can write it? On its records, a statement of all such transfers with the reason thereof, report fully and specifically thereon, in the published statements of its proceedings, which is the minutes. So the reason thereof and what was right after that? Uh, and shall report fully and specifically in the published statements of its proceedings, which is the minutes. So if it's in the minutes already, it's done. Approving 705,000 from the health insurance into the general fund does not tell you fully and specifically why you did that. That just tells you you moved it and you approved it. The reason thereof does not tell you that. It's not in there. That when you approve it, that you moved money into the general fund, you said, I approve 705000 to go to the general fund from the health care fund. That's all it's approving. It does, not say the re it does not say the reason thereof, and it does not explain fully and specifically why. That's what the Century Code says. Well, I would like a reason why it was transferred. I want to follow the Century Code. It's my job to make sure you're doing that, which is why I'm having Shanna review to see if it's in the minutes, which is the official proceedings. Because if it's in there, it's reflected. And I don't understand how the budget or how this transfer was approved if it was not discussed the purpose of it. So let's see if it's in the minutes. Thank you. We'll do that. Mr. Chairman, Jessica, if it is in the minutes, is not, it's your legal opinion and we're following what yes. is written? The official the proceedings, the, and intent. the record of official proceedings is our minutes. So if it's in there, I, I don't know. Then we're in compliance with 112307. Yes. So you're saying if it's approved for us to transfer it into the general fund, that meets all the requirements? Say if that's that what's again? in, if you're saying what's in the minutes is that we approved the transfer? If you approved the transfer with the intention of covering health insurance, correct? Does it stated that way? It has to be stated August that way. August 5th, 2020, Schreer suggested transferring 705,025 from the health insurance fund into the general fund to cover general fund health insurance costs. Okay. Those meeting minutes were approved. August 5th, 2020. Good. Okay, that satisfies it for me too. Good thorough research. We still got some more. We're down to planning and zone board members. in your packet. 
I, I did. You didn't? I did. Okay. Well, it's good we got some bites on it. <coughs> we'll be right back on West Fine. I did email uh, Ron Boyko about appointing another one from their city council. He uh, just emailed me that he'll be bringing it up at the next meeting. Um, it might be a challenge yet, but we'll see. As long as you mentioned Stanton, and Jessica, what's, does it have to be someone from the city council? Yes. Mm -hmm. Two yep. people. Two people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Ron is already appointed, has been for years. Um, but when we went up to, as I explained before, once we, when we went from three to five, planning and zoning had to go from seven to nine. And then it went from one from the county seat board to two. Okay, so when I'm, I'm looking at this planning and zoning sheet right here, mm -hmm. what does uh, EXP 2022 mean? Expired, expire. Oh, expired? So that can be anybody from the county, any place? Yep. Two, there's two at-large positions open and one City of Stanton position open. I thought it meant they were experts in Okay. We got a lot of experts around Okay, we have, <clears throat> we have two applications. Uh, Jessica, are they both able to serve in that capacity as far as legally? I, I don't know what you mean. I'm trying to say, is it a good application? Is it someone that is there some reason that because of the requirements of the planning and zoning, do they meet the requirements of the planning and zoning? They just have to be an adult that lives within the county. That's, that's what I was trying to say. Is I just said it wrong. I'll okay. make a, I'll make a motion. We appoint Leroy Beckel and Wes Klein to the planning and zoning commission. So wait, do you want to specify one is expiring in 2022 and one's expiring in 2024? So there's an unex. Um, yeah, just if you want Okay, to. I'll withdraw that motion. I'll make a motion that we appoint Leroy Beckel to fill the vacant planning and zoning position that expires in 2022. Is there a second? I'll second that. <clears throat> Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Dwight, how do you vote? Aye. Dwayne? Aye. Wayne? I vote aye. Merlin? Aye. I vote aye. Motion passed. Now I'll make a motion that we appoint Wes Klein to the vacant planning and zoning position that expires in 2024. Do we have a second? Second. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Dwight, how do you vote? Aye. Merlin? Aye. Wayne? Aye. Dwayne? No. And I vote aye. Motion passed. Okay, I'll get them letters in the mail. And as I understand, there is no November PNC meeting. I was going to ask you that. It not be December, then that's when they start yep. up. Can I ask you why there wouldn't be if we have a quorum now? I don't know. I haven't put it on the website yet, so. I just got the notice. It's a I did too. I saw, I saw the email too. So whatever you want to do, just let me know. But let me know by the end of the week, probably, so I'm going to send you guys letters. Because that meeting is supposed to be. Because there wasn't really a lot of business, I guess. The 19th. Well, I guess I'm going to have to run it past Cindy. If we have a quorum, we have a quorum now, right? Well, if these guys can make it. Do you got enough money? No, that one's never spent. That's probably why. I guess that's up to Cindy, but we do have a quorum. She has to send that back out. If we have a quorum, if she has business, I don't know why we wouldn't meet. But I'll talk to Cindy. Does she have business? I don't know. I said no, if no, she no. does. I don't think you, so. Does the board mind if I ask Cindy? No. Okay, I will talk to Cindy. Got to be a reason why they're not having one. It, was, it said quorum on the, on the email, yeah. but now we've met it. So okay. is it still valid? I don't know. So I'll ask Cindy if she has business and uh, we have a quorum. We're good to go there.
Okay, still a little while till 10.30. I put this on the agenda. The Sheriff DUI County Concerns. So, is there any further discussion on that? What I was trying to do, and you guys all saw the letter that he wrote back. He said he won't be here and attend our circus. I would like that letter put into minutes. I'll make, an emo I'll make a motion to that effect. His refusal to attend the commission meeting. And he said on Wednesday, maybe he's not busy today so he could still attend. It's Thursday. Is there a second? I will second that. Is there any further discussion? Yes, there is some further discussion. And I would like my comment put in there as long as that's going to be in there. <clears throat> per century code, it says, the commissioner shall superintend the fiscal affairs of the county. In my opinion, if an employee of the county, through their own doing, imposes extra costs to the taxpayers, I believe we are obligated to know what those costs are. These costs could, and that's, a, that's the comment that I want in there. Can I ask what costs? I'm going to part of the, I'm going to, that's enough for my statement that I want in the minutes. You can add the rest if you want to, but I want to make sure that's in there. Possible cost could be insurance. I don't know that for sure, but I wanted to ask the question, and I have a right. No, these are taxpayers' dollars. None of us should be unaccountable to answer questions regarding how we're spending the taxpayers' dollars. Well, I can answer that question, insurance. Okay. Go um, ahead. You know, you, go ahead, sure. Our county automobile policy does not depend on any one person's driving record. They actually have no idea who our drivers are. Uh, there's nobody attached to any vehicles. They cover our automobiles. They don't cover, it's not dependent upon anybody's personal driving record. So, no, it has could, not affected Could we get a statement of that from the insurance company? Absolutely. Um, Good. I did give Good. Um, Marvin, our insurance agent's name, when I emailed you back on mm -hmm. Tuesday. Can so, you? and yep, you can go ahead and give her a call and she'll tell you the same thing. Okay. No, I said, could you supply us with a written response that our... So you want me to get Candy to write a written response? Yep. Okay, if I can get it from her, I sure will. Yep. Okay, that was one of my concerns. I had no idea. And I have a right to ask the questions. I, my question is, can he perform his duties? Does he have a license? Have you asked him that? I've tried to get him on the agenda numerous occasions, Shannon. Are you defending the sheriff? I'm not, but did you ask him to come to a commission meeting, or did you call him and ask him if he had a driver's license? You I, put it on the agenda. Isn't that enough? I put it on the... I asked for it to be put on the agenda. No, before now, Marvin. Right. I've had it on there numerous occasions. Right. I guess whoever can help me with that answer, including our state's attorney if necessary, I want to know if he's been restricted from driving privileges or if he's going to be. Anything that's impacting our taxpayers' dollars that we're imposing should be discussed. It should not be hidden or not discussed. It should be transparent and open. After the hearing coming up, he probably won't even have a license to practice. We're entitled to that information, too. Well, I'm sure you guys can contact his attorney. I don't even know who his attorney is. Well, you have to ask him. I don't either. I don't think it's correct for you to be defending the sheriff. I'm not. I'm just... Yes, you are. I blatantly said that it has not affected our county insurance policy. I checked on it because Marvin had inquired, so I did check on it, and it hasn't affected us. Okay, that's why I put that on there. 
And I made my public statement, and I want that in, in and answer made a to motion his statement. To that effect, and it was second. His response in the minutes. We didn't act on that, huh? No. Okay, is there? asked for discussion. Can we uh, please read the motion on the table, Shannon? To put his response in the minutes. Do we, and I seconded that. Is there any further discussion? Dwight, how do you vote? Aye. I vote aye. Wayne. I vote nay. Merlin. Aye. Dwayne. No. Motion passed. Still have eight minutes till 10.30. Take a break. Okay. Um, we're adjourned for until 10.30. I gotta remember, as soon as 10.30, we need to go to the public hearing. Yep. Land's not redeemed. That's a lot of money. Uh, How's it going, Dad? Real estate, isn't it? Cindy, I imagine that you didn't really have any business for planning and zoning. That's why we, we didn't have a quorum. Is, is there business we would have a quorum? Well, we remember last month um, that Cas the Casper was on there for a non-farm residence, but we don't have a quorum. We don't have a quorum. Well, we, we appointed people today. So. But I would have had to have had it in the paper already. I don't have time. I didn't. We didn't have a quorum by the time I would have had it put it in the paper. And I, and we already made him pay for ads last time. Because Marvin was going to ax you, so maybe he will. But I know too. Oh. That wasn't my decision. <laughs>
Okay, it's 10.30. Uh, we would like to have a motion to adjourn the regular meeting and move into the public hearing. So moved. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Merlin, how do you vote? Aye. Wayne? I vote aye. Dwayne? Aye. Dwight? Motion to move into a public hearing? Aye. And I vote aye. Motion passed. Okay, I believe, Cindy, you have the floor. Okay, this is to set the minimum price for the houses that potentially could come, that will go back for redemption. And how I came up with these is that we know that the, we know the three years that are already owed, and then I did an estimate of the taxes based on what Darby's estimated taxes were, and I got the specials from the cities, and then I added the $50 fee from the sheriffs having to deliver the certified, or the letters to them. So for BB 144880802023, the minimum price would be twelve thousand six hundred fifty-two dollars and thirty-eight cents. Can I stop for the first question? You said three years already owed the specials and the taxes for this year. Mm -hmm. The Less specials than... and taxes for this year and the three years that they're already. Okay. Thank you. And then for HH 144860349080 would be $2,900.60. For HH 144-86-03-4909, For PP 147-850201-02, $4,000. For SS 144-84-01-0711, For SS 144-84-01-0817, For SS 144-84-01-0818, $1,000. Fifty cents. Sorry, SS one forty four eighty four zero two zero two zero two four thousand six hundred twenty four dollars and fifty nine cents, and for ZZ one forty four eighty nine zero two zero one zero nine three thousand two hundred forty nine dollars and sixty one cents, and for ZZ one four four eight nine zero four zero 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 four four thousand twenty eight dollars and forty two cents. Cindy, these um, the estimate that's the estimated taxes for the year for this year for this year, and that came off of the statements that Darby had mailed out. And the specials and that's the, for the for this year that's the city specials, and I got for them for the wonderful street project. Mm -hmm. Or whatever other specials they have, I got them from well, the city. Well, there was none before that, so it's all for the water sewer and. Or it may be in Stanton, but the other That's city. What I'm talking oh, yeah. Stanton. Or they could have back, they had, like, yeah, water, they sewer. Yeah, assessed too for um, unpaid utility bills in the city. And then just remember, too, um, since these all do have specials, the cities have first option to purchase them. <coughs> so, but they can't.
can be redeemed by the property owner up until 10 a.m. on November 17th. So what do the cities have to pay for them? Well, whatever the board um, sets it at, but normally in the past we've always sold it back to the cities for a dollar. Just to get it back on the tax rolls. So we're actually forgiving all these back taxes? And we're, and we're paying the specials? If, well, no, we don't pay the specials if the cities take them back. Who does? The cities. You mentioned a date. You said present owner has until 10 a.m. until November what? 17th. It's always the third Tuesday in November. They had until October 1st just to pay one year, just their 2019 or their 2017 taxes after October 1st at 4 p.m. Then all three years of taxes, penalty, and interest are due up until 10 a.m. on November 17th. So for a present owner to redeem his, or keep his property, he would have to pay the three years in arrears, right? Yep, mm -hmm. plus the $50 fee. Plus the $50 fee. Yep. Yep. How are they notified once we get done with this process? You, you write all these people a letter, or how do they notify? They already have been notified. This is to set in case they don't pay it off, and that would be the minimum price if somebody else wants to come in yeah. and buy it. I hold an auction at 10 a.m. on the 17th to auction these properties off. But these guys have already been all notified by the Sheriff's Department, delivers them a... In May, we send out Sheriff deliveries. Okay. Do we have a motion to accept the minimum price as presented? I'll make that motion. <clears throat> Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? Any discussion? Wayne, how you vote? Aye. Merlin? Aye. Aye. Dwight? Aye. I would I motion passed. Okay, can we have a motion to return, return to the regular meeting? So moved. We have a second. A second. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Merlin, how do you vote? Aye. Wayne? Aye. Dwight? Aye. Dwayne? Aye. And I vote aye. Motion passed. Regular meeting's back in session. Mr. Chairman, do we want to get this clarified? Yes, a good idea. I would have forgotten that. Jessica, we had a question on uh, approving mileage, and I think it was 11, 13, 01, or 02. 11, 13, 02. Number six, line number six. Mm -hmm. Would you help describe that for us, please? Pursuant to that century code, perform and transact all county business without extra compensation specific to the auditor. That means she can't get paid on the side or anything extra for her duties. Mm -hmm. But her compensation, she's entitled to mileage just like every other county official, state employee, everything. That is pursuant to century code 111015. Okay. So in your opinion, this bill is uh, valid, duly filed, and, yes, and qualified I, for payment? Yes. And it, this is kind of ridiculous, quite frankly, but yes. Do we need to make a separate motion since we passed the bills already? Yes, we do. Yes, we so do. moved. I move to approve this bill from Shanna Brost for the amount of $153.24. Do we have a second? Second. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Merlin? Aye. Dwayne? Aye. Wayne? Aye. Dwight? No. How about I? Motion passed. Jessica, you made a comment that this is silly. I don't believe it is. I'm sure you don't. And thank you. That is because none of us should be above being asked a question. We have a right as commissioners to ask a question 
and not be ridiculed for it. And none of the county people should be above being able to be asked a question. I don't disagree with that, but in all the time that both of you have been here, this question has never been raised. Meanwhile, mileage has been paid to everybody else. So I think it's ridiculous that the auditor is being scrutinized for it. That is what my comment is about. I'm just curious why you're defending everybody or defending the auditor. And you just mentioned this question has never come up before. It's a fair question. I'm not getting into it with you. I'm not. Move on. Please don't tell me how to run my meeting. <clears throat> we are a board of commissioners. You are not. Understood. And I'm the state's attorney with a law degree. Remember that as well. And law degrees, people are not above being asked questions either. Mr. Chairman, can we please move on? Thank you. Yes, we will. I just lost my agenda sheet. You want, Buried you want another one? No, we're good. I'm glad you brought that. Portfolio updates. Oh, 10. We've got five minutes yet. Portfolio updates. Dwight? I have none. Wayne? I have none at this time. Dwayne? Uh, ambulance board meeting on the 23rd. Uh, <clears throat> we did order a new ambulance, and the department is still attempting to get more help. Um, our next meeting is November 23rd at 6 p.m. in Hazen. Landfill, uh, they had to get the loader repaired. <clears throat> Again, uh, there's a hydraulic fan that leaked uh, some hydraulic fluid, so they have to get that repaired. And the radiator hoses were rotten, so they replaced those. And otherwise, it's going okay. That's all I have. Don't we usually repair those radiator hoses when it's told below? <laughs> I'm glad they noticed it, so they... <clears throat> no. Merlin? I'm so glad you asked. This is great. First of all, I'm going to kind of horn in on Dwight here. I know, Dwight, you had COVID you wanted listed on there, and I have that as well. I'm just wondering what the thoughts of the commission are. We do have increasing cases of COVID in Mercer County. Uh, do we want to go back to some of our old protocols where uh, the one I'm thinking is where we'd have the courthouse closed people would call to uh, do business and uh, that type of a thing. It's, I think it might be prudent on our part to really keep an eye on this because it could really be a jackpot for us here pretty soon. So I'd like the thoughts of the other commissioners. Commissioner, if I may, uh, today actually I was supposed to be in trial today and tomorrow um, by order of the courts. Those were continued due to COVID concerns. We are continuing with regular hearings. Um, we've been doing a lot of them by Zoom, um, utilizing ITV, but occasionally we do have to have participants come in. So I would go back to the motion I, I, yeah, yeah. to allow for court participants. Right, what the judge in Bismarck, yeah. his protocols, whatever, but otherwise, yeah. you know. They're reviewing it, um, the court's reviewing it apparently week to week for each county, um, but it did affect us this week. So, Mr. Chairman, if I can get thoughts of what you guys are thinking, but um, we, I believe that we should go back to the protocol where we had the courthouse closed to the public, and if they had business, to call in and uh, make arrangements with whichever staff person they want to work with. But uh, just leaving it wide open in and out is, uh, is, and is going to be a problem, I believe. I'm going to go down the line if that's right with you. No problem. Dwayne, what's your thoughts on this? Well, yeah. well just for information, I uh, many times stop at, in Hazen at a convenience store, and for the past few weeks, my what I call friend, they were friends of mine, they weren't there. Well, I found out this morning that the majority of them had COVID and were home quarantined. So, this is all over the place, uh, so I think we should take some precautions here at the courthouse and and until the, the numbers come down. Wayne. Yeah, I I uh, 
definitely agree with that. We we do want to keep you know the courthouse open. And we we are essential here, and if this is a little precaution, I don't think anybody would, should have a problem with this. We we want to keep we want to stay open, and but we want to keep people safe, and and it, it's here. Yeah. Right. Well, it's really unfortunate that everybody don't play by the same rules in the courthouse. The last time we had the color house closed, we had a prior deputy sheriff all the way into the auditor's office. And the courthouse was closed. Um, we just passed, had one office in the building that went through their COVID. There was no reports filed, no nothing. Now another office has it. So I don't understand where you guys are coming from with closing the courthouse. When people get off work here at the courthouse, they're not isolating themselves. They're going out and they're probably talking to the same people that will be in the courthouse tomorrow. So I'm, I'm against it. Shannon, I'm gonna ask you, you're in the courthouse every day. What's your thoughts? I mean, we put up the sign recommending face masks. We, I don't foresee us having a lot of traffic in and out now that election is over. Um, I do worry about public meetings, county commission meetings. We all know that the phoning in was not, didn't work. So I, I don't know. What if these people test positive they're supposed to be responsible enough to stay home and quarantine at home, not show up for work. Hmm. Dwight, you said there was another case in here? Yep. In the building? Yep. Commissioners, uh, I'd like to beg your pardon here for a second. We have an agenda item at 1045. Can we come back to this? Because it uh, might take a little bit longer, and we have people here that came specifically for that topic. Sure. Is that right? Okay. Mr. Zeman, I believe you have the floor at uh, T. Art Zeman, Mercer County landowner. I had a number of comments that I wanted to make today when I was asked my reason for requesting time in the agenda. Art, I'm going to ask you to move the microphone up and please speak as loud. When I look at the webcams or try to hear it, I can't. Okay. Oftentimes, the people talking, I can't hear to re for review. Okay. Thank you. When I was asked my reason for requesting time in the agenda at this meeting, uh, the reason that I gave was uh, Capital Power's interest in an exception to the moratorium. Capital Power is no longer interested in pursuing an exception to the moratorium. I'm not sure what happened. Um, a couple of weeks ago, it seemed like things were moving forward and there was at least a fair chance. I'm not sure when the last time was that the Planning and Zoning Commission canceled a meeting because it wasn't a quorum but that appears to have been the case for November. There is one thing that I would like to say. In my first meeting with a representative from North American Coal, early in the conversation, I stated that I'd already leased the wind. Why would they be interested in a coal lease? And his exact words were, we believe that wind and coal can coexist. I don't believe that's a true statement at all. John Phillips' statement at the last commission meeting, I believe, made that pretty clear. And if you don't remember his statement, I think I remember pretty much verbatim. He said that if capital power develops first, it could halt the eastward expansion of the mine. I guess that's possible. But I think it also made clear where the real opposition does lie. At first, I believe personally that Garrison Butte was a scapegoat for the Cold Creek closure announcement, but I don't believe that's true. 
in approximately a year and a half when the wind leases begin to expire, I believe the mine's going to come, come around and try and pick up some of those leases, and I suspect they will, especially from the landowners who were indifferent. I also know that there's a significant amount of acreage that they're not going to get a lease to, so will their eastward expansion continue or not? That's a fact that remains to be seen. I think the commission is turning their back on funds that would have taken care of approximately two-thirds of your supposed deficit. There's a number of other things that I wanted to say, but I really think I am wasting my time. So at this point, I'd like to thank the commission for the floor. Okay, Art, would you mind if anybody wanted to ask you questions, uh, you don't Go have ahead. to accept. Go ahead. Okay, is there anybody from the gallery that would like to ask Art any questions? Go ahead, please. Can you I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to ask you to please use this other mic over here, and you can extend it away from Art if you want to. I have handheld. Or he, she has a handheld too, but you have to repeat your question, please. I'd like to ask Art if he was, if he was ever told by the uh, uh, wind company that they had secured uh, a position on the transmission lines and that they had a purchase agreement for their power. I don't know the answer to the question for the purchase agreement with power, but they have a spot in the MISO queue. Their, their queue number is J1187. You can look it up if you'd like. Okay. As I was part of a meeting two weeks ago where I was told that uh, it would be a minimum of two years before that would ever even be a potential, no guarantees. So I was just curious if they ever offered that to you. J1187. What does that mean when you say it has a queue for that? They have a spot in the queue at this point. That's their queue number. So are there other people that have that same, have a queue number for that same spot? I don't know the answer to that, Marvin. Okay. I, I see the hand. Give me a second, please. Hey. I, if, if, if I understood correctly, and you know, how was it explained to me, is that queue number still that there is a two-year uh, period of time that they, these companies have to put the money up and then there's a two year period that they do a study to see what they need to do with the transmission lines. That's before you even have agreement for the power. And that is, uh, right now they're waiting for enough people in order to, to complete that study. So okay. I was just curious if, they had, okay. if that had ever been relayed to okay. Art. Okay, we had a hand up in the back, but we're going to table him for the second. Do you have any further questions for Art? Yeah, you, um, I guess I don't have a question, just a comment. Um, they're talking about queues and everything. The grid is full. So I don't know where them queues mean much of anything. Do you want this to be there? Dan, huh? Okay. Okay. Okay, I've just been reminded that we need to stick to the agenda topic, and that's the exception to the moratorium for capital power. So that's where we're going to go. And I appreciate your questions. Okay. Thank you. Um, I guess there's no reason to go any further with it. Capital power is no longer interested. Okay. okay, thank you very much, Art. Hey, that was rather brief, but I do have to stick to the exact what was on the agenda. Okay, um, Merlin, do you have anything on your, oh, we're back to the COVID discussion. Let's, let's finish the COVID discussion. Question that I have, uh, right now Merlin asked that the courthouse be closed 
Dwayne, Wayne, and Dwight, or D Dwayne and Wayne and myself agree with that. Uh, Dwight uh, is against it. Shanna said that there might be lower traffic at this time. I'm not sure where, where to go with this. Uh, do we want to close the courthouse except for commission meetings? Can we do that? We did before. Yeah, I thought we did too. And court participants? I would be in favor of closing the courthouse with the exception of commission meetings and court appearances. Does that include everybody? They, I would say no. Let me add, this is just my opinion, Dwight. I would say no. Let's say someone calls in and they want to meet with the auditor and she's willing to meet with them and they wear a mask or we suggest they wear a mask. Because they're coming in with the other offices and stuff, I think that they would be, have to be required to wear a mask if they came in through the building because the rest of the people shouldn't be exposed to well, that I person. What do you think, Jessica? We can't require that, um, but uh, to that end, let's say it's somebody that's coming in to me to do a mental health commitment or something like that. They can call, make an appointment. We know they're coming. They buzz. We can meet them at the door and bring them directly in versus somebody then that comes into the courthouse, walks all the way through Same trying time. to find an office. So by appointment allows us to by intercept them at the door, get them to where they need to be, and get them back out again. And we can't require them to wear a mask? No. Why not? Because the reason I'm asking is because Menards requires it. Well, you can require it, but there's no repercussions. Right. You're, they don't. Yeah, your recourse is you can't go into Menards then. They can kick you out. No, we're we public, could do the same thing here then. No? no we're, we're a public building. Okay, I got gotcha. um, And the board has no authority to create any criminal ordinances. Um, and there isn't one to fit on that. So. so I'm going to suggest that we close, and this is going to be a discussion, that we close the courthouse to the public except for commission meetings and courthouse appearances and appointments. And, and appointments. Is that a motion, Marvin? No, I'm going to ask the board what they feel about it. I'd like I'll to make that go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I want to clarify too that um, make it so that it's uh, for court participants. Um, the courts are utilizing a public access phone number for the public to be able to call in. So we're not, I mean, we're, we're still holding open public court, um, but they are restricting because we have so few spaces available within the courtroom. So to for court participants. Uh, I would entertain someone making that motion. Merlin, you brought this up. Would you be interested in that? Yes, but I have other issues with this besides. Well, well let's finish the, let's do the, the motion, and then in the discussion, we'll talk about the other issues. The other issues have to do with COVID, right? Correct. Okay. Can let's you do make that. a motion out of uh, portfolios? Sure. Discussion in portfolios? I don't there, know it's also a topic item of COVID. It kind of meshed into one. COVID was added to the agenda. Right. It's, what, what's meshed with COVID? Well, well he brought, he brought up, up COVID in his portfolio right, updates, right. but it's also an agenda item. So. Right. So I think it's, Dwight, is it all right if this covers your concerns? You brought it up to be on the agenda for COVID. Merlin brought it up as part of his building and grounds. Can we include your COVID discussion as this discussion? Yeah, I guess it's fine. Thank you. So, do we have a, a motion to close the courthouse or not close the courthouse? I'll make a motion not to close the courthouse. We don't need a motion then. Don't need a motion for that. We were already open. <laughs> you want to make a motion, brother? Not I'm going to. So moved that we close. Except but again, well, go ahead. Then we. Except for appointments, court participants, right. and commission meetings. Yes. And court participants, right? Yep, she said that. So. Okay. Do we have a second? Second half. Please read the motion, Shanna. To close the courthouse except for appointments, court participants, and commission meetings. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Now you can have your other discussion. Yeah, you you have some other topics. <laughs> okay. Back yeah. to the white. Now you. You said there's been some within the building yourself. Yep. 
So we have some internal issues besides yeah. external. Yeah. So I'm just wondering now, are the internal protocols being followed? Is that, you know, for cleaning and things like that? I'm I not, know. I'm I not emailed, quite sure on that. I emailed both uh, Kim Albers and I emailed Carmen Reed and I never got a response from either one of them about my concerns about COVID in the courthouse. What are our... Well, I'm assuming that if we do have a, somebody sick or whatever that... Jim, Jim has Jim's been, Jim is notified yep. and then they clean. Yep, and that's been done. But every person needs to be responsible in this case. They can't just depend on one, Jim just can't know that somebody has COVID. They need to contact Jim and let him know so that they can get to clean. It can't be passed along. Nobody can be passing the buck. They need, if they have it. You do that though, right? Because you're our COVID coordinator in building? <laughs> is, is that a title? <laughs> well, it can be, whatever you want it to be, but. It doesn't matter, but just, I have. This gets taken care of. It needs, Jim is the one that needs to be notified. And by who? You as coordinator? Because they let you know that it, that they can it, let me. Well, they're going to let me know if they want their COVID pay, their 80 hours of COVID pay, because then I have to have a doctor's note. But they let you know if they tested positive? Some people do, some people don't. And that's why I said everybody needs to be res responsible, and the department heads have to make sure that they're the ones being responsible. Well, they don't notify the county, or they won't notify the person. If the person is positive. right and that person needs to notify yes, exactly do this isn't a case of contagious measles this is a pandemic situation and that responsibility by those individuals is great that they notify everybody and again i think i've said this before till you know i'm, I'm hoarse but if we have that kind of thing happening for sure <coughs> Jim needs to be notified so that the cleaning can be done otherwise if we don't get the cleaning done then where are we going to so we don't clean other than if there's COVID uh, or Nope, like just like yesterday, Jim, they deep clean. They spend hours in there. They yeah. clean everything. Yeah, pens, everything. It's a deep clean. And he did just recently send out an email reminding departments that when you leave at night, you need to be responsible. You need to wipe down your chairs, your keyboards, mm -hmm. your pens, your pencils. That needs to be on the employee. Everybody needs to do their part in this. Well, and remember too, that these are guidelines, recommendations that come down. I, to I talked to you guys before about, they sound all great and dandy, but when we get down to nuts and bolts, sometimes it's difficult. Just yesterday, I talked to Jim about the potential in my own department. If it's during the week, my, my office isn't gonna set empty for 24 hours. I'm gonna have to be there. So how deep cleaning, how this stuff works is gonna be department dependent. And we as department heads need to have some responsibility in, in doing that, depending on what it looks like. So, you know, for my office, just the layout is different from the tax directors. So each, we just gotta be diligent. Everybody has to have personal responsibility on it. And us department heads need to recognize what our department needs and be communicating with Jim. Okay. Uh, one of the offices this morning told me that Jim cleaned it. He said they, that office has never been so clean ever. So he's doing a very good job. He is, yes. Now, we can't, in my opinion, we cannot legislate, as Jessica is saying, we cannot legislate every scenario and variable that's going to come down the pike. It, it's impossible. Every office is different. Situations change in that office at different times. We can't do that. However, we can. can control access to the building, and we do have a motion to that effect. And I would like to, uh, in a second, I don't know if I even wrote it down, where? Wayne, Wayne seconded, Merlin gave it. Okay, is there any further discussion on closing the building? Any further discussion? Merlin, how do you vote? Aye. Wayne? I vote aye. Dwayne? Aye. Dwight? No. I vote aye, motion passed. Okay. The next thing on our agenda is Asgard. Just a minute. Oh, did Just a minute. What did I miss? I've got more uh, buildings and grounds. Uh, Go ahead. Portfolio. We do Port have one clarification. Is that effective immediately then? Yes. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I did not make the motion. 
Reverend has to answer that question. That was the assumption, right? Yeah, because okay. I don't think the uh, virus is going to wait a couple days. No. <laughs> Thanks, Marlon. All you right. Want me to contact COVID about this? Yeah. You got the hotline number? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so Merlin, you're still on buildings and grounds. Sorry. Okay, may, this may be something that we want to table for next month, or in our next meeting anyway, the PREX, the PCCS for our service agreement quote. Those folks uh, decided they didn't want to do what we uh, asked them to do with it as far as our eight hour response if that thing goes to pot. And uh, they would like to change our contract with them so that uh, knowing that they can't guarantee an eight hour response, they would do a same day response and arrive as soon as possible. So I think that probably would have to be written up and put in this thing and then maybe brought forward to our next meeting. If you remember, you know, this is for, you know, our server and all of that kind of stuff that we have. If it goes to pot, we had an eight hour agreement in here and then they, they can't do that, but they would come the same day of it, so at least we wouldn't be down for three or four weeks or something like that. But I think this uh, service agreement needs to be rewritten with that in there, and then signed by all the parties. But uh, is there a, a cost reduction in that? Then do we save that four hundred fifty-six dollars? That's not indicated on here, so that's a, that's something that probably could be researched before the next meeting. Because we're paying extra for that eight-hour response time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, four hundred sixty-five dollars. So, so anyway, just for your information. Or lessen it. So, well, okay. Did you say same day response? So what did that? What did that mean for weekends? Did it, did you mention that at all? Because that would be my. Because if there there is some value to still same day response, they might be acknowledging that eight hour window is not going to work, but there might be. Because the. So yeah, because that that was the the biggest concern was if, weekends. If it goes to pot on a Friday or night. And or so Saturday I guess Sunday. I would. They're still available twenty four seven for emergency response. Right. So it it yeah. may be that they recognize eight hours might not be enough time for travel, but if they're still ensuring that twenty four seven response, mm -hmm. it may you know we could maybe amend it to specify. Because they come yeah. out of Minneapolis, right? Because there may be. Yeah, I like mean, Jim wrote there. They're okay for. Uh, same day response, whatever that is. Right. So, so I think I sh we should get clarification if that includes weekends, and there it's not. So if that's you, the case, sorry. yeah, so there might still be value. They just are acknowledging that eight-hour time frame. So okay. Well, we'll look at this stuff, and then we can put it on the agenda for the next meeting and get it yep. clarified and see where we're okay. at. Uh, yep. I, I have a question there. I, Jessica's one hundred percent right on that. Um, what thing you said? Same day response. Did you say or as soon as possible? It says. It's, what did you say in your notes, Merlin? It said uh, they want to change it to same day response and as, arrive as soon as possible. Okay. So they're going to be here on the same day. Well, if it's 10 o'clock at night, they're not going to get here at the same day, but that's for, it'll still be as soon as possible. Okay. I can understand their concern. Let's just say they're on a service call right now and they're in the middle of something and they can't stop. And run up here. So, so how do we proceed? On agenda for next meeting. Yep. In the meantime, I'll get with Jim and email him and clarify. And clarify. See, see yep. if we get a uh, price reduction because it's not a 24-hour deal or whatever. But. Well, no. Now, okay. Let, let me be clear from the board here. Do are we comfortable that it's not the eight-hour window if it's the same-day response 24/7 to continue with that price, or? Are we wanting the reduction because there's no eight hour window? I'm, res this is for myself, I'll just put it in my words. I'm satisfied with that response, but I want to ask the question, would they have a reduction in cost? Okay. They could say yes or no. Well, I'll clarify with them and see what they say. Um, Jess, you want these to work sure. with them? Sure. Does anybody I'll object to, to proceeding in this matter? All in favor? Thank you. That was my question. It was going to be is how are we going to move forward? Jessica yeah, volunteered. Okay, you still have the floor there, Merlin. Part of your portfolio. Okay, my other portfolio would be that uh, 
for our social service. Well, this is kind of yours. I don't want to step on your toes here. Yeah. Did you have you been apprised yeah. of the situation over there with no. social services? No. Oh, they did. No. No. Should've. no. They should have. Anyway, there's right now with uh, staff missing and whatever, the uh, building over here will be open on Wednesdays only for the time being. And when we have another staff person coming back, then we'll get back to uh, somewhat of a regular schedule. So anyway, I guess that takes care of any COVID over there because that's already shut pretty much. Do we need to put that notice on the website, Shanna, that that building's closed except for Wednesdays? No. no, the social services? No. I think Steve's probably might have it on his someplace. Yeah, they're not part of us anymore. Okay. We still have the floor. Yeah, I can't remember what else I had, but if I can remember, if I can have a privilege of getting back to it before we adjourn the whole Well, we wouldn't miss it for the world. I bet. That's exciting. Okay. Last thing on portfolio is uh, Asgard Resources. Well, you don't have nothing on your portfolio? No, I do not have nothing. Okay. Thank you. Um, before the last meeting, I'd done some visiting with the people involved, and um, I brought, sent them four conditions to the commission meeting. I talked with Leroy Beckel, I talked with Asgard Resources, Dave Lundstrom, and Dave Sebastian, and they were all receptive to these four conditions. And then at the last meeting, I find out that Dave Sebastian pretty much tore it all apart, and these four conditions weren't included in the permit. And that's about all I got to say on that. So. Is there any further discussion on Asgard Resources? Okay, is there anything on the agenda that we haven't covered? Yeah, you want to get back to me now, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I wouldn't miss it for the world. And this is re regarding our uh, county library that we have up in Garrison. The uh, bookmobile hasn't been in operation. Our, uh, some personnel up there did have COVID, so they've been out of business and has since uh, resigned from library duties, so I believe that the uh, head librarian up there is looking for a driver. So if people are saying, well, we haven't seen the bookmobile around, that's why. That's all I have now. Are you tickled? I'm kind of tickled, but I'm still in favor of discussion on the viability of that bookmobile, whether we need to keep that expense. But. That's, that's not on the agenda for today. No, so. and I think that's probably irrelevant since we approved the budget, but when it comes to budget time next year, I would think that'd be something mm -hmm. to talk about. It can or cannot. Okay. Do you have anything else, Merlin? No. Nope. Okay. Before Merlin remembers again, does anybody have anything that we haven't discussed on the agenda? There'll be no other business. This meeting is adjourned.